Hey everyone, in this video we will go through how to run XFOIL from MATLAB. This is not a comprehensive XFOIL tutorial, I'm just making this video because I'll be making another video on the derivation and coding of the vortex panel method, and I'll compare those solutions to the XFOIL pressure coefficient plots. So the first thing you need to do is download XFOIL, and then we can run the executable by double clicking, and I'm just going to make it fit the vertical screen here. You can see that there's lots of uh, commands in this command window here. And if at, ever, at any point you need to see these commands again, you can type in a question mark and press enter, and they'll show up again. And you can see that there's two types of commands. There's ones that have periods in front of them, and there's ones that don't have periods. The ones that have periods in front of them are different menus that you can enter into, and the ones without periods are commands uh, that will do something. And so some of these commands uh, have arguments such as f i, r, or s, where f is a file name, i is an integer, r is a real number, or s is a character string. Now there's obviously a lot of options here, but here is what I want to be able to accomplish. I want to set the type of NACA airfoil, change the number of panels, save the airfoil data points to a text file, set the angle of attack, and compute the pressure coefficient and output the CP data to a text file. First, we'll create the airfoil using the NACA I command shown here, which sets the NACA four digit airfoil. In our case, we're going to type in NACA 2412 and press enter. This creates the airfoil. Next, we want to be able to change the number of panel nodes so we can enter the .ppar menu with the period in front of it. Uh, and this says uh, that it shows or changes the paneling. So we can type that in uh, and note that the commands are not case sensitive. So I can type this all in lowercase and press enter. And so you can see that we've entered into this PPAR menu, and also that this plot shows up of the airfoil with the paneling shown. And it says up here, the number of panel nodes right now as the default is 160. And so we want to change the number of panel nodes. So the way that we do this is we can type in here, it says N space I, that's the number of panel nodes. And so if you want to change it, then I'm going to type in N, and let's do 35 so we can see a big difference. And we'll type in 35 and press Enter. And you'll note that nothing happened, and that's because we need to press Enter one more time. So we press Enter, and you can see in the plot over here that now it says the number of panel nodes is 35. And you can see that there is uh, much coarser paneling of the airfoil in this plot. And so to get back to the uh, default XFOIL menu, we need to press Enter one more time, and now we're back out to the XFOIL menu. We now want to save the airfoil coordinate so that we can use it for plotting and for a future panel code that I'll be uh, coding up. And so using P save, so if we press question mark, right, it brings up the commands and you can see P save here with the uh, input argument of a file name writes the airfoil to a plain coordinate file. And this does not include a header line and this is what we want in this case. So we can type in P save and then we'll type in, this is the file name, I'll just call it save underscore airfoil txt and press enter and that saves the airfoil text file and I'll show that in a second. Now we need to enter into the OPER menu and so we type in OPER and you can see that's the one that's up here and we'll press enter and you can see that now we're in that uh, menu and so the question is what are the uh, commands in here so we can type in question mark and you see now we have a different command list and so what we need to do now is set the angle of attack and you can see up here it says alpha space real number and that's prescribed the angle of attack in degrees and so we can type in alpha and I'll just set it right now to zero and when I press enter now you can see the CP plot shows up in the plotting window for the NACA 2412 at an alpha of zero degrees and what we want to do is save this CP data out to a text file and what we can do is use uh, this command right here, cp write, so cpwr space file name, and that outputs x versus cp to a file, and that's what we need. So we're going to type in cpwr, and we're going to call this save underscore cp dot txt, and we'll press enter. Now let's take a look at the data files we have output. You can see they're both here, and in the save airfoil dot txt file, we can open that, and here we can see that there are two columns of data, the first being the x uh, the X coordinates of the airfoil and the second column is the Y coordinates of the airfoil. And then if we open up save underscore CP, now you can see there's three header lines and then there's three columns of data. The first is the X coordinate, the second is the Y coordinate, and the third is the pressure coefficient data. Now I'm over in MATLAB and you can see that I'm in the folder where I saved the airfoil and the CP text files. And so what we're going to do now is just read in these files and see what they show. So the first thing we want to do is read in the data file, the data file for the airfoil. And this is the file name. We're going to open it. And then we're going to use text scan to read in the data. Recall that there's only two 
column. So that's why we have two floats here that we're reading in. There are no header lines. And then after that, we close the file. And then we separate out the boundary points for the X boundary points and the Y boundary points. So I'll press uh, Control Enter to run this section. And then next, we're going to read the data file for the pressure coefficient. So that's the save underscore CP dot text. Same idea, except now there's three uh, there's three columns of data, and there are three header lines, and then we're going to separate out the CP data as well, and then I'll run this using Control Enter, and then we're going to plot the data, and I just separate this into upper and lower uh, data points based off of the Y coordinate of the airfoil, uh, just so that we can visualize the separate data. And so if I run this section, now you can see that we get two plots. The first one is of the airfoil, showing in blue the upper coordinates and in red, the lower coordinates. And then you can see the same CP type plot that we had from the actual X foil of the CP versus the X coordinate for both the upper and the lower uh, sides of the airfoil. Now this can all get really tedious if you do this a lot. So if you change the airfoil, or if you change the angle of attack, or if you change the number of, number of panels, it can take a long time to go from X foil and saving and hitting all those commands and then coming into MATLAB to run your script. So what we want to do is run X foil and get these two plots uh, or the, the two data sets uh, without having to go into XFOIL itself. So let's see how we can call XFOIL from MATLAB to return the two text files that we desire. If you go to Google and type in XFOIL MATLAB, the first link uh, is a file exchange entry that you can see here. We can click on the Functions tab to see the code. And if we scroll down, then we get to uh, right here, and it says this is where we execute XFOIL. And so you can see that we are going to use this uh, call the executable and we're going to input an input file uh, and we're going to pass this uh, command into the system function of MATLAB. So there's three variables that we want to specify that we did when we were actually running XFOIL. The first is the NACA airfoil, the second is the angle of attack, and the third is the number of panel nodes. These are specified here and note that these are strings so that we don't have to convert them into strings when we're writing the file. Uh, then we also have the uh, airfoil save file name that's here and the CP save file name and that's here. And then the first thing that we're going to do is delete the files if they exist, because if you don't, then something funky will happen with the CP file. Uh, so what we're going to do then is have the input file be exactly what we typed in, the exact keystrokes that we typed in for the actual XFOIL uh, when we were running XFOIL before. So here's how we do it. First, we open up a file to write as the input file. And you can note this is called XFOIL underscore input dot txt. Uh, the guy who wrote the file exchange file had a .inp file for input, but it doesn't matter. It can just be a text file. And we're opening it up for writing. And then what we want to do is enter in every single keystroke that we did. So if you recall from when we went through the XFOIL uh, operation, we first typed in NACA space the NACA airfoil. Uh, and then we press enter, and that's what the new line is. Then we wanted to change the number of panels, so we typed in PPAR, press enter. Then we typed in N, uh, and then the number of nodes that we wanted and we press enter and then recall that we needed to press enter twice once to make uh, to make the new airfoil with the number of nodes and another time to get out of the PPAR menu and back into the XFOIL menu. Then we save the airfoil using psave with the save file name for the airfoil we pressed enter then we went into the OPER menu then we set the alpha, the angle of attack, to AOA, and we press enter. And then we wrote the CP file using CP write and the save file name CP. And then we can close that file. And you'll note that this creates a file when I run it over here, xfoil underscore import.txt. And this is the input file that we're going to use. Then in here, we can run xfoil using the input file. And so this is the same code essentially from the file exchange where we are running. So the command that we're running in the system function here is xfoil.exe. And the reason this works is because I'm in the same directory as the xfoil.exe. Uh, and then we're inputting the xfoil input.txt file. We're running it into the system. And that will give us this result when I run it. And you, you can see it briefly pops up with the plotting window for xfoil. Uh, and then we get the same uh, airfoil and the CP plot. So now you can see in this directory here that we have the save airfoil, save CP, and XFOIL input. Uh, but if you're running this and all you want to do is get the actual data, the uh, boundary point data and the CP data, then you don't actually need these files. So what I do, this is the same stuff from before. So what I do here is I just, after I'm done loading in the data, I delete the CP file. And up here, after I 
load in the airfoil, I can delete that as well. And I can actually delete this, uh, the actual xfoil input.txt as well after I'm done running this. I don't do that here, but you can do that as well. Uh, because we don't need those anymore, all we need uh, is the actual data after we've read it in. So if I run this again, then you can see it deletes those files, so we don't need those anymore. Last thing to check is just that this makes sense uh, with other values of the three inputs here. And so let's do 0012 at the same angle of attack. We'll run it again. Yes, you can see that now we have the 0012. Uh, let's go back to the 2412 and we'll go to an angle of attack of maybe five. You can see now we have a different uh, CP plot than if we had it at zero and we'll run that again. And then we can also change the number of nodes and if we change this down to 35, now you can see that we have less data points as well. So this is a quick way of just getting uh, the XFOIL outputs, these specific ones that I'm looking for. I'm just looking for the CP value so I can compare with a vortex panel method. Um, but this gives you a quick way of calling XFOIL from MATLAB so you don't need to do all the manual input that you used to have to do. Thanks for watching.